The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the anchoring ministry in government in as far as Zambia's foreign relations are concerned. It is here where certain partnerships, both at multilateral and bilateral level, are forged. Today on News in Depth, we look at the economic value of state visits, and this is against the background of the high number of presidents or heads of state that have been to Zambia in the last few years. Well, we'll be learning more about Zambia's economic diplomacy agenda on today's program, and I'm your usual host, Penifa Nirenda. One of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand and to be understood. A prominent quote by Roman philosopher Lucius Seneca. It is within the ability to understand and be understood that diplomacy equally thrives. Zambia has a rich history of supporting those it aligns to, a situation that was prominent in the era of first president Kenneth Kaunda. Regional interactions were numerous in this era. Outstanding among some of the interactions was the visit of the Queen of England in 1979 and ten years later, the head of the Catholic Church, Pope John Paul II. It was equally not surprising to see iconic South African leader Nelson Mandela take a trip to Zambia immediately after being released from prison. With the fight for political independence out of the way and the onset of globalization, interactions among global states has taken a whole new meaning. After uh, 1990, with the onset of globalization, um, diplomacy has placed more emphasis on economic diplomacy in the sense that uh, states wish to translate they are good relations into concrete economic benefits, mutual benefits for both countries. So these are frequent uh, heads of state visits to Zambia are a good sign both on the political front as well as on the economic front. Trade, foreign investment, aid, technical assistance, economic related agreements and international economic policies are some of the tools being used in economic diplomacy. Maximizing economic diplomacy is embedded in Zambia's Vision 2030 and also has considerable presence in the 7th National Development Plan. Our drive is to make sure that uh, Zambia is just on the same pace with other countries, both in the region and uh, uh, of course on other uh, further multilateral uh, interaction with other countries. The idea of using Zambian missions abroad to propel economic growth is ratified by the Policy Monitoring and Research Center Head of Research and Analysis, Salim Kaunda, who wants to see a more persuasive strategy. In as much as we talk about uh, the resources that we have as a country, we need investments. And for those investments to come up, it's now the skill of our embassies abroad to actually persuade big business houses to come and invest in Zambia and that calls for of course capacity building among uh, embassy staff to be able to get the best deals to be able to be good at negotiating to organize uh, trade expos. Ambassador Chiwa underscores the role of missions in marketing Zambia. Economic diplomacy PENFA involves a lot of partnerships so our missions abroad should liaise with the, our missions resident here in in Zambia because they too are trying to brand their countries. So we must uh, find areas of common interest between missions resident in Zambia and the, the various missions uh, that are based in, uh, in countries of accreditation. Interactions among heads of state are seen to inspire diplomatic ties, hence the leaders engage one another in different ways. Conferences at regional or global level such as the UN General Assembly, offer platforms for engagement. Leaders can take relations a step further through one-on-one -on -one exchange visits. This could either be classified as state, official or working visit. 
Well, there are a number of uh, implications when you see uh, a number of presidents are coming through to visit uh, uh, your country. Uh, one of the things that it affirms is some good relationship that is existing between uh, our country and the countries that have uh, had their heads of states visiting the country. Uh, secondly, it also means that uh, these countries are seeing certain opportunities that they would want their business men and women to exploit. Uh, and it's not only the business community that would want to exploit some of those opportunities, but also governments themselves, because there's business that happens between governments as well as the private sector players. According to the protocol guidelines, a state visit is undertaken by head of state whose duration of stay is usually two nights and three days. The visiting leader is treated to a ceremonial arrival and departure, accompanied by a 21 gun salute and state banquet, after which a joint communique is issued. For an official visit, duration is one night and two days, or as defined by the host country. While preparations are similar to that of a state visit, the gun salute is reduced from 21 to 19. Activities take a different order for a working visit, which is usually focused on mutually agreed predetermined objectives. Duration is normally one day with virtually no guard of honor and gun salute. State visits are considered to be the highest expression of friendly bilateral relations between two sovereign states. In diplomacy, high level at high level state visits at the level of uh, heads of state is the ultimate uh, cementation of um, relationships between uh, Zambia and its various uh, bilateral uh, partners. Between August 2016 and May 2018, Zambia has hosted about 13 heads of state and government from different parts of the world. This is besides other high-profile dignitaries interested in social and economic projects. Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Marian Deselein was the first foreign head of state to visit Zambia in 2017, and his visit propelled agreements in civil aviation services, tourism, city decongestion, and livestock and fisheries development, among others. Because of Zambia's relation with Ethiopia, now we have this partnership with Zambia Airways, they relaunched Airways of course, so as a result of the relations that we have with Ethiopia and that's why there's this partnership. Then also as we're talking of aviation there's this uh, single African sky agenda that has come up and what Zambia should do whenever there are all these international protocols, like I said it has to be strategic and the question should be how do we get the best deal for Zambia because if Zambia is relaunching an airline in October and there's this single African sky, Zambia should automatically say how do we jump into that. Next was the King of Morocco, who was hosted for an official visit, resulting in a record 19 bilateral agreements signed during his stay. Later in 2017, it was the Togolese president whose presence resulted in agreements between the two countries covering sectors like agriculture, mining and energy. With such interactions, the translation of agreements into tangible development strategies is of interest to the Center for Trade Policy and Development. There is need to do a lot in terms of uh, the policy uh, framing of our country if we are to actualize uh, proposed investments. This is actually a big challenge that institutions like the uh, Zambia Development Agency has been facing. If you look at the investment pledges against the actualized, one of the things that you note is that the actualized do not match up to the pledges. And one of the challenges that they've had is to ensure that the environment in which the business players are operating is conducive enough. And in creating a conducive environment, it should not more towards uh, just creating an enabling environment for foreign investors. Uh, there is need to actually strike a balance to ensure that even the local investors are able to thrive and compete favorably. In the same regard, the Zambia Association of Manufacturers wants to see better synergies with private sector players from visiting countries.
Now, of course, we have our Zambia Development Agency, which uh, is mandated with highlighting where the investment opportunities are and advising where the incentives uh, for the various business delegates who are coming here uh, would be and how they can take advantage of them. Uh, there's still a lot of work that we can do. There's still a lot of uh, building of synergy between different players, the Association of Manufacturers, the Farmers Union, uh, the private sector, basically, and the government to ensure that uh, when we have our foreign delegates coming in, what we're actually promoting is a situation where uh, we are encouraging our foreign investors to partner with local uh, with local firms as a means of you know growing what is already established. With the understanding that friendships between countries thrives on the give and take philosophy, the trips abroad undertaken by President Ed Galungu have been linked to the increased number of foreign leaders traversing Zambia. For Zambia to actually get the best deals from the international community. We have to begin from home here. We have to ensure that uh, before diplomats are sent out, especially uh, the trade attaches, the tourism attaches in, in the embassies abroad, I think we need a very rigorous approach of economic diplomacy to be embedded in them before they actually leave because that is one sure way in which people would actually go there and win deals for Zambia. And I think the president still remains number one diplomat. As he moves on, he sells the country. People actually are able to see, to know about them and come and invest. And that's what we should continue preaching upon. The increased number of high-level visits is said to put Zambia in good light. So it's a show of confidence, I think, an increase in confidence uh, in the investment climate in Zambia. And also it's encouraging, I think, it shows that people are keen uh, to participate in the economy, which is something we need. Uh, we do need more foreign direct investment, but as well we also do need more local direct, direct investment. We look at uh, the current fundamentals occurring in the country. If there is peace, most investors would look at their investments being uh, protected in the country. Countries uh, do not need to work in isolation. Equally, us as Zambia, we can't work in isolation. Thereby, we need to engage several of our <clears throat> neighboring countries and even countries uh, world all over. 2017 was even more busy with numerous leaders making their way to Zambia. Rwandese President Paul Kagame, Ghanaian leader Nana Akufo Ado, Madagascar President Harry Matiao Rajanari Mampianina, and Kenya's Uhuru Kenyatta were on the list of leaders who engaged President Edgar Lungu on various bilateral issues. The likes of Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni graced Zambia's independence celebrations not so long after former South African President Jacob Zuma officiated at the 91st Agriculture and Commercial Show. The number of foreign visitors cheers the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Zambia's international profile will basically be built because, as you may know, um, a country cannot be an island. We, we, we cannot insulate ourselves from uh, normal interaction, from social, economical and political uh, uh, platforms with other countries because we have to work with other countries to, to implement uh, our vision in development. For the Ministry of Commerce, Zambia needs to sustain a good profile to attract investors in a competitive region. Zimbabwe has come into the play. So is seriously our competitor in trying to do the same investment. And also we must take full cognizance of the, the fact that South Africa, also with the new dispensation, the new present coming into being, is also beating up, you know, trying to drive or bring in investors in their country. And as well as Angola is not being left behind with the new president. So that has given us this, you know, age and push to do things better. How have these interactions been utilized? Of course, there are the various areas where we are looking for sort of greenfield investments. Uh, we want new investments in sectors that haven't been tapped yet. But there's also still a significant amount of uh, work and progress that can be scored if we actually build on what's already existing. Now, in order for that to happen, it means we have to adequately profile uh, our own investments here in Zambia. If we're looking at the manufacturing sector, we must be able to say concretely when it comes to Zambian manufacturing, if you're looking 
looking to invest in agro-processing, yes, there are these unt unt untapped areas, but there are also these established sort of already operating areas that we can build on. And I think as we go forward, we do really have to look at, take a very critical look at how we take advantage of the investment opportunities into the country. The Zambia Development Agency is tasked with the job of translating investment pledges into tangible development projects. It is also their responsibility to coordinate private sector players who accompany the president during high-level visits he makes and when he is playing host. The agency says its work is made easier when the president travels. When your head of state travels, it's high level. And most of our investors, uh, especially these big multinational investors, uh, because of their um, status, it's very easy for them to come and meet with you when you're on a state visit than if you just go as an agency. So uh, President Edgar Galungu, what he did was to emphasize from the time he came into power that every state visit, I would want to carry business people from Zambia. Why? For possible partnerships and joint ventures with foreign investors. Government has gone further to dangle incentives that make Zambia more attractive. We're now discussing with current investors in the country whenever we think we should look at policy change or whatever so that we've got an input from them. And again, talking about the, the, the political you know, stability in the country, that's a plus. You know. So we are encouraging the people to come in and we'll try to give them as good incentives would be which would encourage them to put their money here. Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry Christopher Yaluma has extolled economic diplomacy as a strategic tool for attracting investment. Diplomatically, we must be in a position to play our card well to bring the investment in. You need to have that diplomacy and that skill to try to convince the investors to come into, into, the, into the country. Certain sectors are of interest to the Centre for Trade Policy and Development and government as well. There are key sectors like the agriculture sector. Uh, the government has been planning, or, or the country actually, has been planning to diversify from depending on the mining sector for a long time. But in terms of actualizing uh, this diversification agenda, it is something that has been a bit of a challenge for a long time. We have continued to depend on the extractive sector in terms of uh, our exports. Uh, so if we look at uh, the investors that we are trying to woo into the country, there would be need to strategically look at the agriculture sector and some of the the options that exist within the sector that we can unlock. Unfortunately, the cross-border traders feel a little left out. Most of the trade missions that Zambia has taken to go to other countries, um, the delegation that uh, the Zambian maybe government that can actually take to, to the other uh, countries uh, does is not much representative in terms of stakeholders that need to take advantage of the markets there. But DDA is quick to point out that business partnerships are arranged regardless of size. Whenever the president asks, can you find Zambian businesses to come along? Uh, we are not picking them on the basis of the size of their business or the nature of their business. Of course, we would encourage much more those who fall within what we call the priority sector, because the priority sectors like agriculture, energy, tourism, we know that the uh, the, the chances of striking a deal are much, much higher because we have a competitive advantage compared to the countries we are going to, so it's easy to attract them. Against the reservations raised by the cross-border traders, manufacturers are calling for better trade facilitation initiatives, tapping in the priority sectors. In line with the diversification drive, the agriculture sector is seen to be critical in effectively utilizing bilateral and multilateral engagements there was a signing of a memorandum of understanding on an agricultural project between the Green 2000. This is a leading uh, irrigation um, system and equipment supplier in Israel. The project investment cost is also estimated at 82 million US dollars. And this company is targeting to set up an agricultural service and a training center in Luena farm block in Luapula and Mansha farm block in Muchinga province. As a result of certain agreements, 
the Ministry of Agriculture expects technology transfer that will result in all-year production at the farming blocks. Uh, there's a project of about 250 million where the farmers are supposed to do engage into irrigation all year round, meaning the production is supposed to be all round. Another critical sector listed in the diversification plan is tourism. It is worth noting that visitors like the Indian president Ram Nath Kovind branched off their formal programs to visit the mighty Victoria Falls, a wonder of the world. On the other hand, the king of Eswatini explored Zambia's tourism spectacle in a private visit to South Luangwa. Their feedback and experiences are to be transformed into marketing tools. A head of state is actually a, an entry point in as far as the marketing of tourism is concerned. It's actually a very big opportunity when you receive such high profile visitors and they visit your tourism sites because they become the witnesses of your culture and your heritage. A challenge has however been placed on government to improve infrastructure and easier access to some of the tourist sites at lower cost for locals. Uh, with the introduction of levies, it is our hope that uh, the resources that are being generated uh, through the levy that people are paying by uh, using uh, tourism facilities will not only be used to market, but it will also be used to build the necessary infrastructure that can support the tourism sector. Ronald Totela is in charge of the Ministry of Infrastructure. The economic theories in terms of infrastructure agrees that you cannot have sustainable and meaningful development without infrastructure. You can't talk about tourism if you, can't provide, if you cannot provide a road to lead tourists to site. You can't talk about trade if there will not be movements of people, goods and services. So the basic things that we need to do is to put infrastructure, and this is exactly what we are doing. In influencing key regional programs, certain infrastructure projects are of importance to the ministry. When we started constructing the Kazungura Bridge, it did not attract so much attention. But when we had the two presidents visiting, the former president of, of Botswana, General Hian Kama, and the, His Excellency President Longu visiting, it attracted the attention that even the new Zimbabwean president had to think twice and, uh, and requested he, the two brothers that uh, also Zimbabwe become part and parcel of the development of Kazungu. Besides physical infrastructure, recommendation is also for Zambia to invest in soft infrastructure. Um, but when we talk about infrastructure projects, I think one, one key area that we also need to focus on is on IT infrastructure. I think we're seeing a number of our institutions, for example ZRA, uh, starting to upgrade their systems. We're seeing the government talking about Smart Zambia. Uh, but in all of that, there is a network that is required to support these sorts of systems. I think we are all well aware that currently, uh, if we're talking about you know, access to Wi-Fi, just as an example, we still have a lot of work to do to make sure that it's as efficient as it needs to be in order to promote all of these sorts of systems and these upgrades that we're bringing into play. So it's a very holistic approach that we have to take. Some presidential visits carry more political significance, as was the case with newly elected Zimbabwean president Emerson Mnangagwa, as well as the president of Sarawi, Brahim Ghali. Zambia also recently hosted the Angolan president, Joao Manuel Lorenzo, Botswana's new president, Mohesi Masisi, and the Indian president, Ram Nath Kovind. The Angolan president and his delegation are said to have brought more goodies for several sectors. It will be very, very easy for those that are seeking leisure, relaxation, to move into Zambia without any hindrances at all because of the waiver on visas for both those that are holding ordinary passports, including those that are holding uh, diplomatic passports. We are now seriously looking at having uh, road infrastructure between the two countries, uh, rail infrastructure between the two countries, and a, a fiber, a fiber network will be going along with, 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 the, with the rail line. The agriculture sector has registered its own benefits from the most recent high-level visits.
The Indian president also came. There was the Indian line of credit to do with farming equipment, the mechanization, because now farmers have to irrigate from the traditional hand oil into different types of even small and bigger farming machinery to enhance their production and productivity. The ZDA has its own list of successes recorded from foreign engagements. The coming in of uh, Dangote into the cement industry, uh, the coming in of uh, El Swedi, who are now doing uh, generators, uh, meters, they are based in Indola. All those as a result of state visits going into business discussions facilitated by um, the agency. And, and the list is long. Despite the gains observed from the many foreign leaders coming to Zambia, analysts are aware that some of the agreements may take time. The role of the private sector in actualizing some of the many agreements signed when leaders meet is underscored. Zambia is a liberalized economy and the, uh, um, uh, these are not mere pronouncements of these policies. Zambia is, imp is implementing that. Um, it's one country where uh, uh, the economy remains liberalized. And uh, if one has got the capacity to invest in Zambia, it is the most uh, uh, fertile ground in the region. Manufacturers want to see more tangible benefits from state visits. But we must be able to draw those tangible results um, out of each of these state visits. And we must have an agenda, and we must be very focused, and we must be prepared to take advantage of that and to ensure that the benefit is to Zambia and not to individual firms or to other countries, solely to other countries. The Center for Trade Policy and Development also wants Zambian businesses to grow their footprint in view of the numerous high-level engagements. It would be very interesting if we can get to a point that uh, as a country we can confidently brag of having uh, companies or establishments that have got footprints uh, beyond our own country. We have countries uh, or we have companies like uh, Zambif, there are companies like uh, uh, Trade Kings that have made headways but there would be need to actually exploit. However, an effective follow-up system is being emphasized. I think there should be a task force mandated to ensure that all those memos, perhaps given a timeline, produce results. And as long as we don't have an effective M&D, it might not, we might not be able to, to track the progress of some of those signed uh, memorandums as well. It is the job of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to maintain the country's image abroad. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is, is an interface, uh, Zambia and the outside world. Uh, that's why we have in our mission we have trade data shares. Those trade data shares, um, when they find the key uh, uh, connections in the countries where they are serving, uh, of course they will come through our ministry and then uh, we, it is asked now to interact with the portfolio ministry, the line ministry, uh, to make sure that they execute whatever need be. Recently, Zambia revised its foreign policy, thereby refining its approach towards bilateral and multilateral interactions. Attracting more trade and investment opportunities are key components of the Zambian economic diplomacy drive. So far, more than 26,000 job opportunities have been pledged as a result of investment pledges exceeding $14 trillion since August 2016. The expectation is that sectors like transport, construction, health, energy and ICT, among others, will benefit from investment emanating from Zambia's interactions with regional and global economic players engaged at presidential, ministerial and private sector level. Today's edition of News in Depth ends here and we've been looking at the economic value of the recent high number of state visits Zambia has been hosting. We do hope that this week's program was informative as it was looking at Zambia's economic diplomacy agenda. Join us next week for yet another interesting documentary right here on TV1. Goodbye and God bless you.